Welcome once again to Architectural Engineering Student. You know, what we have here is a Plymouth Speck of Building Design. It's called a Tiny House. And what this is, is a condition in a, a structure that's actually on the wheels. It's on a trailer condition. And when we talk about tiny houses, we talk about things that are not really governed by building official. They're a little bit different thing and they don't really fall under a building official condition. These are things that could go on or said to be non-regulated land and we talk about the condition of tiny house in that way and people along the nomadic path and they decide whether it's something that, that they feel comfortable in their life having or they don't. And so what we have here is a a portion here. This is a W condition. This is on a trailer. This is eight feet. That's the breadth. And then over here we have H, and we have three feet and, and ten feet there. Here's P in conventional uh, construction provision uh, superstructure, as you might call it there. And so what we have here is A sub A, and that's the mapped ground acceleration. Here's P equals W, and that's the total W here times the A sub A. And we have W's in pound and per foot in length. So each incremental length that the one has, that's the one foot strip around the perimeter and the length of the thing. And so we have then the sum of month dot A, and here's A here, and here's B here. That's a minus W, because this is a minus rotation, we'll call it that, that way, times the breadth divided by 2, plus then this rotation, that's a positive rotation the other direction. W times A sub A times H times the base isolation coefficient and that's equal to zero. This base isolation coefficient that has to do with these these tires that are on the trailer. And we say that we've gotten proof that it's so because we haven't done laboratory testing that that coefficient is about 0 0.30. But getting on with this equation, and these W's cross out, and then we do a further simplification here, and we get the breadth divided by 2H, that's this breadth, and here's our H here, is equal to A sub A times the base isolation coefficient. And so that becomes our equation, where A sub A is the largest mapped ground acceleration for the geometric shape, that's the static force procedure or overturning prevention. And we're talking about this in whether it's going to be overturning or it isn't because of some ground acceleration that occur. And so we have then in this consideration check overturning for air pattern. And this is the prevailing air pattern in the long direction of the thing. And this is the prevailing ground acceleration and condition in this perpendicular direction. If you thought about some orientation, that's the thought that the one had. And so we get this proportion. The, the tire provide a base isolation for the ground acceleration. The thought being having no proof, as was stated, the coefficient being 0 0.30, as in a standard consideration for an elasto damper ground acceleration reducer. Such damper reduced the acceleration to the superstructure. So we get the, the breadth divided by 2H divided by the base isolation coefficient is equal to A sub A, where B is the breadth and C sub S is the base isolation coefficient. And so then our simplified equation then becomes B divided by 2H multiplied by CS is equal to A sub A there. And that's the mapped ground acceleration, though to be larger than in overturning resistance based on the young tree for tiny animals. We consider the condition in response spectral analysis for the conventional construction provision residence. The natural frequency is likely larger than 1.0 second. The condition then stated in a condition on a rock foundation the type A soil asphalt parking lot being similar to that.
condition. And so here we have our air pattern condition and the conventional construction hurricane tie down. So this doesn't fall off of the particular trailer that it's on. And we have H, and this is uh, the, the wheel height, and here's the superstructure, there's the breadth B. And we have P equals WW times 1 foot times H, and here's P, and here's our uniform load for the 1 foot strip length of this thing. And we have P equals W sub W times 1 foot times H equals W sub W H in, uh, in pound. We're going to sum the moments around A, A equals uh, equaling 0, minus W times B over 2, plus then our W sub W times H, and that then is the, the P times H over 2, and then that's equal to 0. And so some things cross out here, we get then our equation, which is W, that's the total weight, times B divided by H squared equals W sub W, where W sub W is in pound per linear foot, also for one foot breadth, for the incremental length of the thing, W sub W is in pound per square foot, as is stated in con conversion being MPH. And so when we have a condition, we say W sub W in pounds per square foot, and that's the conversion in MPH, and that comes from the consideration where it said be corners of uh, the particular superstructure. And so we have what should be the consideration then in the framing way, and this is 15 pounds per square foot. That's just an estimate, very rough estimate, times 1 foot times 8 foot plus 8 foot plus 10 foot. That's the perimeter of the thing, plus uh, the portion there. We have the total W is equal to 540 pounds, and H is uh, 13 feet, and it's W sub W is 540 pounds based on our, our general equation, times 8 divided by 13 feet squared, and that's then 25 MPH. And so that states the, the it's not going to topple over at 25 MPH. So we know that uh, according to the calculation, the residents topple in 25 MPH, that's the, the boundary condition, it's capacity, according to the calculation provided. And the evidence indicate the residents be at least good, this is by, uh, by observation, 50 MPH. We say to be metal uh, sheds that were for garden sheds and they were empty, and a 50, H, 50 MPH air pattern came up and they toppled. So we know that uh, residence that is about the same as that and is filled with things and has all its hurricane you know, anchors, if you thought so, then it wouldn't be conventional construction, it would be something a little bit better than that, and it would not topple off its trailer. But in this condition, so we say that uh, the, the consider the, the factor six condition from bring back, that comes from a table that had occurred many years ago and it would say that the MPH, if you didn't consider the corner condition, was said to be the capacity MPH of the structure, then multiplied by 6. And so we have 25 MPH times 6, and that's 150 MPH. And that's a very large, then, MPH, and it should be a hurricane condition. So, and we had to ask ourselves, then, anyone could ask themselves, so would the thing topple at 150 MPH? And so the statement being small residents having no hurricane tie, and that's to the foundation. You know, and we're talking about the roof condition also. This is no hurricane tie. Have lost the roof in such air pattern. 150 MPH, the roof comes off and the whole thing fails. And we say that therefore the conventional construction provision building would not, in the tiny house, would not be for 150 MPH condition there. Other similar residents slid on the concrete having hurricane tie on the roof and that's the condition. At 150 MPH they were in a warehouse, they put the, the large fans on them and they simply slid across the floor. And, well in the structural consideration that's considered to be a failure of the system 
And if you, if you figured that this thing was tied down or kept from sliding by some element there, then it would topple over at 150 MPH. And that's what our, our statement says. These structures do not, you know, in our judgment then, survive the condition 150 MPH air pattern. They, they collapse in that condition. Based on our own calculate, we wouldn't want to have these structures be anywhere that was more than 25 MPH is the same that we say is our safe condition. But once again, we do know that those garden sheds, they did collapse at 50 MPH. So somewhere between you know, 25 MPH and 50, 50 MPH, we say is our, our safety boundary, but we don't know entirely where that would be. And so, because we haven't done laboratory testing about each and every specific instance, the residents having slid stay uh, likely uh, topple. You know, the, in that, uh, if they if there's a stay here, then it would topple if it didn't slide, as was stated. Same as being possible failure at hurricane for the tiny house having hurricane tide. And so then we get to what's said to be our, our last page here, our 5 of 5. We have A sub A equals B divided by 2H C sub F, and that's 1.0 G. So this tiny house condition is said to be having capacity at A sub A and ground acceleration 1.0 G, but it has to have a small air frame. So in the conversion in that, we have P equals A sub A times W. W sub W equals P divided by H, and so we have 41 MPH. And so that's what that 1G condition conversion happens to be. The 25 MPH is less than the 41 MPH, so we would never state that that would be the condition for that. But it's possible the thing could survive, but we don't know. A 1.0G event if, as it was, the MPH was just 25 MPH. So then we say the, the best use of the tiny house being where the ground acceleration is no more than 1.0 G, less than A sub A, and there is no hurricane or tornado, nor rather large velocity air pattern. The condition in the range, the tiny house being by the knowledge in ground acceleration and air pattern by the trailer driver, there being no guarantee as the after year 2000 world minimum criteria, by calculation the tiny house is defined being a type 1 building. And it's really said to be in that way a building that would not be for a building official regulated land but for a land that was non-regulated and that the, the trailer driver knew that particular MPH at 25 and the, the, the ground acceleration one felt comfortable together to have the thing be the thing that the, the one feel comfortable in their own life being the, the driver of the trailer of such a thing. The full-scale model testing for an engineered version may have a tiny house together tied down into soil, that's just not the, the roof tied down, but actually anchoring the thing in the founding soil and hurricane anchor meeting then possibly a type 2A building criteria. So that's uh, this time in registered resident occupants some discussion about the tiny house and uh, ones then being the disciple of discernment, they decide where a tiny house is something that they have a liking to drive somewhere and, and live in one place or another along their non-regulated land nomadic path. And that's this time in architectural engineering students.